Good morning. Bloody A's. Um, that's what I'm going to talk about. Uh, this presentation uh, will draw on phenomena of visibility, hypervisibility, uh, hypervisibility and invisibility, that uh, three characteristics that we use, and I say we because I'm working with Valerie that already presented yesterday, that we use to approach China current uh, development. Then uh, to unfold those uh, characteristics or, or phenomena, I will develop three hypothetical or fictional dialogue or reference. The first one, the first one, visibility, Duchamp's dust. Um, I refer to this um, planning strategy developed by Duchamp with the help of Man Ray uh, in 1933. Uh, as a kind of fictional response, fictional, let's not so, not so unsure about that, a fictional response to um, Le Corbusier's drawing. And for various, uh, various reasons, um, the first one being uh, that uh, the kind of uh, wording behind the Grand Vert, the big glass by um, Marcel Duchamp, where this dust is lying on, and uh, being taken a photo by Man Ray in 1933, uh, just uh, the accumulation of dust. And uh, the Grand Vert, in the, the, the large glass, uh, uh, using exactly the same uh, letter as the Ville Radieuse, VR, which we can see on the top corner. Then, um, hypothetical response, but that's not the most important thing. What is really important is the differences between one um, system and the other. A fundamental difference between the Ville Radieuse and the dust breeding can be perceived at a structural level. In Le Corbusier's project, one, one layer replaces a previous remove, uh, uh, remove layer, whereas in Duchamp's, new layers is superimposed over the underlying one in order to promote entropy as a system and randomness as an organizing principle. That's a starting point uh, we used to um, unfold the logic of um, um, China development in our region, the Pearl River Delta, which I will refer to the PRD. Here is uh, the first image of a uh, long series and long research we have done on the highway, on the system of elevated highway existing in the Pearl River Delta, uh, addressing this um, reimposed layer uh, 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 proposed by Duchamp in the form of informal economy, not replacing the uh, normal one, but cohabitation between local and global. Here, the, um, the, the, the bicycle man um, being kind of uh, relaxed under the highway and the highway being the global system, I mean the not the opposition, but the juxtaposition between the local and the global. To such a point that ironically, this um, lying man under the highway of the Pearl River Delta becoming the iconic image for um, the uh, first Rotterdam Architecture Biennale to represent or to talk about mobility. Then our approach to this project, uh, kind of regional studies around the highway, first to do maps and uh, to put things in relationship using uh, uh, logic of urban networks as, as uh, 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 traditional um, geographers do. And uh, what we did was first to um, look at the, uh, at the potential of this highway, study this highway, uh, elevated highway, and uh, look at its morphology. And over a year of time, we could see this um, territory uh, growing, expanding, changing, uh, I mean, nonstop. And uh, at one point, um, going out of the highway, uh, going under the highway, finding a community of, uh, of uh, migrant workers uh, enjoying and developing new form of urbanity. 
And that was uh, uh, the response uh, for the Rotterdam Biennale at that time, developing this logic of the assembly line and the merchandise moving from the factory to the port, directly to the port through the highway on the top, the global uh, uh, network, and underneath the highway, this community that is invisible from Google Earth. Then enjoying a new type of uh, uh, cons uh, cons uh, consuming uh, uh, a life uh, collectively and uh, developing also a new form of informal economies and structures. Uh, several years later, we continue on this uh, extensive research by exploring another highway, which was in that case a ring road, uh, the Guangzhou Ring Road, where basically there was two forces uh, uh, being uh, uh, um, in contact uh, between the city wanted to go out and the uh, uh, countryside wanted to come in and finding a kind of relaxing or, or, or uh, not relaxing but uh, um, um, intermediate space where uh, there is a, a negotiation happening, a zone of contact and a zone of conflict becoming basically a peaceful zone then uh, with various activities taking place. The second um, uh, um, paradigmatic uh, approach that I would like to take is to refer to Benjamin Telescope. And uh, that's probably the explanation of the title, Bloody A's, this machine for a double thing. And the uh, uh, logic comes from um, a letter that Benjamin wrote to a friend in 1935 where he was, during the time that he was uh, struggling, you know, to put in order the arcade project, uh, and he wrote uh, to his friend, I could not see through the 19th century uh, uh, logic. There is this bloody fog or bloody haze that uh, uh, do not allow me to do that. And while he was writing that, he basically realized that this bloody haze was exactly what w the logic of the 19th century. Uh, in the form that he will interpret later on in the form of phantasmagoria, the, uh, the art of making ghosts alive, and also as a, as a form of spectacle. Then uh, that uh, uh, bloody haze is, um, is a logic that we use uh, recently uh, for a project we did in Hong Kong, for the uh, uh, Hong Kong Biennale, uh, putting two giant binoculars next to each other, actually, uh, in, the in, the, in the newly uh, uh, um, new land in the center of the city, and uh, looking, at, uh, looking at Hong Kong uh, from China, from uh, the, the, the main continent, and with a particular logic that um, basically the two binoculars will include all the binoculars inside, one which will be uh, acting as a normal binocular, like a uh, macro, and the other one that will be inverted uh, uh, and, uh, and uh, uh, moving the, the city away. Then uh, with the addition of uh, a potential fog, which is uh, uh, industrialization, the, 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 the logic of the industrialization uh, imposed onto, uh, onto the city fabric. And then what we discover is basically that there is an impossible, uh, an impossibility to, to see through uh, uh, the, the, um, the spectacle that it's offered, which is in that case the skyline being perceived as a, as a kind of a stock, in, uh, stock uh, exchange index uh, for uh, economy in Hong Kong and China. Then, um, move on on that. Then the also uh, this ability of, uh, of uh, 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 this impossibility of seeing through uh, uh, the, the skyline and uh, with the logic of uh, uh, relationship between uh, China and Hong Kong means basically happy together but uh, never together. Then that's some details about that. Another um, logic of the hypervisibility that we, we develop with this uh, 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 binocular system and, and this bloody ace from Benjamin is this project called Pixel, uh, a minute area of illumination, which at one point we interpreted as a minute area of illumination, means uh, uh, time and space uh, together. And for that, for that project, uh, Pixel, uh, we imagine a small kind of particle 
uh, uh, character that will uh, move around China and try to understand uh, 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 various phenomena that emerge uh, at the surface of China by reinterpreting it. And uh, the way he did, I mean, the way we did that uh, in the kind of uh, uh, logic of uh, Calvino logic, this little particle moving from uh, one place to another and uh, uh, building a catalog of uh, people's buildings, uh, structure, infrastructure, uh, vehicles, uh, informal economies, and so on, uh, and putting them together, recomposing the uh, uh, space of uh, the peripheral delta. And then here, some images of that. Then transforming that uh, quickly, or again with this logic of hypervisibility, into gamebook, hide and seek in the peripheral delta, uh, looking for Wally uh, in that case, but also looking for uh, uh, informal economies, uh, vehicles, tools, uh, uh, generic peoples, uh, friends, and so on. Word search. That was the occasion of uh, uh, starting to build up fictional uh, stories. Uh, treasure quest, uh, which was uh, uh, not too much, which was a, a, a logic of navigating uh, uh, the territory of the peripheral delta, looking for a special treasure, and finally the color uh, color the peripheral delta, which is basically to color the people that we usually do not see. And then all these uh, uh, projects were transformed into what we call uh, unreal estates of China that's uh, become something more fictional and more narrative. As, a, as an expression of that is this uh, uh, um, drawings, uh, um, reusing um, uh, old drawings uh, uh, that Le Corbusier used in, uh, in urbanism and uh, where um, is um, uh, is uh, uh, showing uh, Louis XIV overlooking at Versailles' uh, uh, project, and here uh, us looking at oh, Valerie holding the map, and myself looking at uh, looking at the work of uh, Shenzhen being built, uh, and Shenzhen being qualified as the capital of the 21st century. Then the last uh, uh, paradigm will be uh, Brodo's wheels, and um, and this kind of. Uh, logic of uh, capitalist uh, uh, economy, cap capitalist market economy that China has uh, developed uh, in the in the last uh, in the last 30 years now, and uh, I would like to, in that case, reuse Brodel's uh, 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 approach of not um, separating the uh, the logic of the domestic and the market as both economy that can be used then without any opposition in that case, uh, we started to develop a research project uh, within the factory uh, called uh, Sunning Factory, a textile factory with uh, 10,000 inhabitants, and, and developed this project called the City of Production as a factory, as kind of critical mass, all, all the component that a city uh, is holding. And that's uh, uh, the signage of the of the um, signing factory, a dollar sign. And uh, the logic was to first to do an analysis uh, of this uh, production system, then also to look at the social component, to study work life, and ultimately uh, ecology within the uh, within the factory, which we did. Uh, and turned uh, to be a, a, a film, a 52, docu a 52 minutes documentary. Here are a few uh, images of uh, the factory that basically include all the uh, component uh, work, life, uh, educations as part of the same complex. And ecology as it's a, a, a highly polluting factory but that uh, 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 is uh, ge regenerating uh, all the water that they consume, uh, a very uh, ecologically uh, friendly uh, approach. What we find uh, in this, um, in this um, factory is those kind of um, devices to activate the, 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 the machine 
And that was very uh, interesting because it was a turtle and a rabbit. And uh, we turned that immediately as a kind of signage and uh, possible sign that China could go fast or could go slow as much as they want and readapt. And that's very interesting because that was part of this uh, ongoing project of the city of production being a possibility of uh, being characterized a kind of um, uh, uh, developing a positive capitalism. Then for that, uh, we develop an index called the R, the Human Accelerated Region, as an as a index that uh, will uh, 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 kind of characterize the level of development. Try to finish. Uh, then the, it's, a, it's a normal index like we, we are measuring pH and uh, the, the center should be the kind of dynamic equilibrium. And for that, uh, to move on on the, on the logic of the R, we develop an harmony we serve as a system to value uh, of value to promote dynamic equilibrium as an harmonious society. And we develop various uh, bank notes, the R money, which I'm presenting here quickly. To develop a new, via, new value for China. Thank you very much.